a key goal of many apps is to generate income for their owners and creators. But how that money is made often needs careful consideration. In this Two Minute Tuesday, we'll talk about the ways in which you can accept payments from users, as well as a few rules to watch out for. First up, web apps. There are a range of payment models to consider, and at the end of the day, the type of product or service you're offering will determine how you ask users to pay for it. If you're selling access to a set of tools or resources, then a subscription model based around regular monthly or annual payments can work well. It lets users spread the cost over a longer period of time and ensures a steady stream of revenue to support your work. Alternatively, you may be offering more discrete products or even selling physical goods through your app. In this case, simple is often better, taking one-off payments just like any other online retailer. There are also gig economy style setups like Uber or Deliveroo, where you're running a platform that connects customers with contractors to provide their services. Here, payment goes through you, but is ultimately paid out to the contractor, minus any commission or costs that you take. For all of the approaches, uh, Gravity World, we use Stripe. It integrates quickly and easily into any web app and offers a one-stop solution for billing, payment processing, security, refunds, and reporting on all of these payment methods. It saves us time and gives our clients the tools they need to stay in charge of their application's finances. Things are a little different when it comes to mobile app payments. Depending on what you're selling, you may have to take Apple's and Google's policies into account. The good news is that in-app payments, subscription charges and billing reports are all handled directly via your App Store account. However, if you're charging customers for digital goods, that is, anything that they can't physically own, then the App Store will take its own commission of 30% in the first year and 15% every year after that. There are ways around this, but they come with the risk that policies may change and you'll need to rethink your approach yet again. At the end of the day, it's a balance of cost and convenience, but it's something you should be aware of when drawing up business plans for your app.